Hello. Yay. And also introducing to you guys the lovely bear. <laughs> so she is obviously center point today. Um, she is going to communicate in her own gorgeous way. I might even ask her a few questions. Oh my God, well. don't. But, um, but just, just so we're all on the same page, you guys have been watching these for a little while. You know what this is all about. But Kate actually doesn't, so I'm going to tell her mm. now. So basically what happened about sort of a few months ago, I was sitting down and I was thinking, how can I best be of service? Um, so that's something I always sort of come back to and it's that continues to inspire me and motivate me in my life. Like mm -hmm. it's not really about like what do I want and what do I need, but actually like how can I best be of service? And I was thinking, I was like, so for years and years I've been writing all these newsletters and I know some of you guys have been like, this is really resonating. Thank you, Josie. And I thought, well, that's very nice, but what else can I do? And also what would be inspirational for me too? And mm -hmm. I thought, I have such a big network of amazing people like yourself, gorgeous friends, and some I work with, some are just friends, some are both, blah, blah. And I just thought, what if I was to share some of your guys' stories, like mm -hmm. your why, what gets you out of bed in the morning? I know some of you have gone through a lot of really big changes in your life, really big career shifts, also just changing direct direction in life, also just going, what actually matters to me? Mm -hmm. And this is really what I'm going to be asking you today, Kate. So as I mentioned in the beginning, you can share as little or as much as you want to share. But I just want to tell you guys, um, Kate, as you've probably already noticed, is this incredible woman. Mm -hmm. um, not only from a business perspective, I, I think I actually only know 5% of what you do for a business. Mm -hmm. But you know, um, but as, as a person, Kate is this wonderful, wonderful person who I've had the honor of not just living in the same neighborhood, not just working with, but also being on holiday with. I know. We went to Mexico this summer, right? What a dream to see each other there. Absolutely. And I think... Turn my holiday around. And, and you're mine. And I think the biggest thing that stands out for me, um, ever since the first time I met you, really, is your big heart. Oh, you know, you're in red nice. today, you know. But, but Kate, you literally have so much compassion for everyone. Oh, thank you. you know, and, and the more I get to know you, the more I'm just in awe of, of this kind of like, that you've just got this huge, big, beating heart for making things better, not just for your friends, your colleagues, your family, but, but really for the wider communities. And you have such a passion and such a drive for it. So I'm sitting here opposite you now, like really feeling so special that you wanted to do this, but also just in really curious to go, wow, like how did you get to this place? So, so it, let's, take us, let's take you back in time a little bit. And, um, and I'm just gonna ask you, so before you, you decided to set up this wonderful company called Push, that you set up, where were you at in your life? And do you remember if there was a specific point where you kind of one day woke up or if it was a gradual process where you're like, well, whatever else I've been doing, like that's not it anymore. And, and this is, do you remember a specific time? Yeah, so I, um, I worked in advertising for um, the best part of 20 years. So Push has been going almost eight years. And yeah, I worked for, in advertising for about 20 years beforehand. And, um, and I loved advertising. I loved everything about it until I kind of stopped loving it. And that was down to a number of things. But I think, you know, not only was I starting to burn out um, and certainly not looking after myself in the way that I do know now, um, but I think at the heart of it, it was, I think my values really, well, my, sorry, let me rephrase that. I think my, my, my values probably stayed the same, but I was, my purpose was changing and what I really wanted life to look like was starting to change. And I went from a place of, that advertising world feeling really right to me, so it's starting to feel really wrong, mm -hmm. and it just didn't suit me any any longer. And I think, and I think what I'm trying to say is, I think that the real me was always kind of there underneath it all, yeah. and I think those values had always kind of been there, but I'd really shrouded them for a number of different reasons, which I can talk about later. But um, yeah, it, I think the real me was kind of starting to come up, shall we say? Yeah. Um, and I really wanted to be true to that. And also, you know, put on top of that, the fact that I really hadn't been looking after myself very well, um, you know, and I was burning out for sure. Um, and, and ultimately, I was burnt out. I, I was signed off with stress. Um, and I knew that um, I didn't want to go back into advertising. I knew it wasn't right or healthy for me anymore. Um, and so, yeah, I, I felt like I was living a very, very, very incongruent life. Um, an unauthentic life and, and anyway and, and within as as is often with all of these circumstances you know something has to change and and ultimately I, I've kind of broken the process I guess um, and that change came about. 
Wow, and so you were signed up for stress. I mean, I can relate to all of it a lot, but I'm trying to just stop myself from just talking for the whole day. <laughs> so you got signed up for stress. In how long were you signed off for? So I was off for three months. Yeah. Um, and I basically in that time had a conversation with my. It's really weird, isn't it? I can feel it in my body when I talk about it. Um, I had a conversation with my old employer about leaving. Um. I knew that that organisation wasn't right for me, that industry wasn't right for me anymore. And, you know, I had a very frank conversation of, I don't really want to be here, I don't think you really want me to be here, do you want to talk about me leaving? And I did. And um, and in that time, I'd previously been thinking about creating something like this. Like, I'd, I'd been to a retreat earlier in, um, this is in 2014, and I'd loved everything about it. And I was like, oh, I'd love to do something like that. And this idea of kind of like people like me, and um, like quite burnt out people, like helping support them, that was starting to form in my mind, but I'd never, I just didn't have the guts to do anything like it. And then, you know, the universe has a very funny way of getting us on the right track, doesn't it? Yeah. You know, and, and then consequently, obviously when I was off, I was like, maybe this is my time. You know, maybe, maybe this is, maybe this should be what I'm doing. Maybe this is what I'm being pushed into doing, you know, even though I've been afraid to do it. And so because I'd had that time off, it didn't seem quite so terrifying, you know, the yeah, yeah, steps yeah, yeah. a bit yeah, yeah, slightly yeah, yeah, yeah. You had removed yourself yeah. a little bit from the world, you had had that exactly. little, little moment, even though it was under stressful circumstances, even yeah. though you were greatly affected by the burnout, etc., etc., you had still physically yeah. removed yourself already did little steps. Absolutely. Oh, wow. Rather than being so in it, you couldn't, I couldn't see. Yeah. So it gave me, you know, as challenging, you know, and it was really challenging having that time off, but it was a bit like, it also gave me space for possibilities, I guess. Um, so I left in the September and then um, the next few months I basically um, spent um, working on what this concept quite might be. And um, I and I do think, you know, and, and I look back and blow me, did I work hard? You know, but I also think that when things are meant to be, they kind of fall into place. And I and I had this idea for push about, as I said, looking after burnout professionals, kind of bringing them back to life. And and I seem to have this network around me. Initially, it was just exercise, mindfulness, nutrition, and coaching. And I seem to have this network around me of people. And then we launched the, and it all came together. And we launched the first retreat in the January. Um, Wow. Yeah, I mean, and somehow I had like eight people on this retreat from nothing, which in, in benefit of hindsight hell did that happen yeah. I literally I, you know it was just like putting it out on my own Facebook and social and stuff so and, I, you know what and I really relate to that because you know like the first time I ever on a retreat I wasn't even a certified yoga teacher right like you know I've done yoga my whole life I didn't actually I don't really I'm not a big advocate of certificates I'm yeah. much more about experience yeah, so I was like yeah, well yeah. fuck sitting on a mat for four weeks and now you're a certified <laughs> teacher whatever yeah, like do you yeah, know yeah. anything about anatomy or injuries blah blah anyways I, I had that similar experience yeah. a friend of mine came to me and he was like my family has a house in Italy. Um, is there any way you, you know a teacher who wanna rent it to run a retreat? Yeah. And I was like, Yeah, me. <laughs> uh, 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 and, and then I was like, um, and Giacomo, if you're watching, you know this is about you. And I was like, Yes, I'll do it. And I was like, um, and whatever money we make, we're gonna to give to a children's cancer charity. Like I wanted it to be all motivated about sharing something I was yeah. deeply passionate yeah. about instead of doing something so, so you, I don't know if you know this about me, but I had modeled most of my life and it was never my passion I mean you know yeah. very grateful I could do it it got me lots of you know traveling this and that got me some savings but it was never my heart it was yeah. never my passion so so this thing when I did that one first one it was also just all about just sharing the good. life share, yeah. exactly and, and giving tools to people so that they yeah. could practically take them away and hopefully that would make their life experience a little bit better so yeah. I really relate to that and I did the same like now looking back I was also like how the fuck did we pull off getting yeah. 10 people like I had zero clients <laughs> I, I wasn't even teaching in it. a studio <laughs> and that's crazy do you know it's really weird I had um I was talking to a friend of mine like literally when push was in its first months it's in very inception and she um she did tarot and she pulled out this card and I remember it so clearly and I was saying I said to her I was like am I doing the right thing in creating person she pulled out this card she was like wow and I was like what she was like this is a card I can't remember what it was which card it was or whatever she was like she was like you're doing what you were born to do and it really like and it's still, I'm getting goosebumps no it really stuck sticks with me now and I just think that that's you know, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm not here to say that the journey's always been easy. Of course it hasn't, life, life isn't, right? But, you know, I, I, and this, is, I suppose, is one of my greatest learnings of anything, you know, it, it's always okay in the end, you know? And I know that if you put one foot in front of the other, things keep happening, yeah. you know? And I know I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing. And I think, actually, 
you know, even over the last few months, obviously the, the incarnation of Push Now is very different to the one that it was then, you know, we don't do retreats. You know, we're only, um, we're in corporates and we work with charities and et cetera, and schools, et cetera. But um, yeah, it's, I do know that if you just keep going, things unfold. Um, and I and I genuinely feel like I'm doing what I'm meant to be doing, and it's becoming even more so as time goes on. Which is incredible, and I think really like I mean it's, it's so juicy everything you're saying, but I'm just trying to get into a few things. Uh -huh. The one thing um, is that whole thing of like you gotta keep moving, and this is not to say you need to be a vocaholic and work 500 hours yeah. a day, but it's that thing of going you. Like even if even if because you know we talk about science and we're like well the tarot came and the, the, the universe provides but then there's also going to be days you're like well I'm getting fucking nothing right yeah yeah, yeah but I'm getting yeah, yeah, yeah. no sort of response from the universe that this is my route and and on those days you're still going to keep moving and seeing you're still going to go out and have yeah. your nice walk and you're still going to yeah. you know sit down and go like okay so today is not the, the day where I try and, and contact a million people because I don't have that vibrant yeah. energy behind me but today is the day where I'm like okay well you know how would my ideal thing look like you know like you still chisel away every day a little bit and a little yeah. bit and a little bit and, and i think this is this is one of the biggest learnings i mean with my clients but also in my own life you know people sit there and and so, certain people they might have get in a dream or a desire to do something and even if there's fear stopping them but they can see it mm. but they cannot put together where they're at now and how they could get there yeah. And, that, you know, for instance, someone wants to be a coach or someone wants to be a teacher. And I'm like, okay, so start teaching. Yeah. And then they're yeah, like, yeah, oh, but yeah. I, okay, I need to have, like, some people will be like, I need to own the studio. And, and I'm like, you need to call up your best friend and get them into your kitchen and you need to just start teaching them. Like, yeah. we have to engage with that which we're actually dreaming about. Yeah, of course. You know, that is so, so important. It's like, like, you can't just sit and theorize about it and there's never going to be a perfect moment. Ever. And listen, I think if you do do that, it's about recognizing that that's fear. Of course it is. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, it's just it's just your fear standing in the way in, in the many different guises that it does. Yeah. You know, but it's, you know, I think there's something in like you said you know i mean i've got i have no idea looking back how i did what i did and i don't know if i could do it again right i mean i'm sure i would do something but i, I, I don't even know if i want to do it again i mean that i mean that's all said i mean i must say that i um you know it's funny isn't it when you're in these moments you're like oh my god this is so hard i look back i was like that was a brilliant time like yeah. i loved the hustle and i loved yeah. you know and starting all up and like not having a clue what i was doing yeah. wow i love i love it now now i'm thinking about it in, in retrospect but I think there's something, you know, I think I'm also really starting to realise I'm such a doer and I'm so comforted by action, but I am realising that that's also a massive distraction for me. Everything, you know, there is, and, and this is probably a talk for another time, but, you know, the, the more I get to know myself, um, like I said to you, obviously I've given up drinking recently and that's been a really huge thing for me in terms of really coming, really understanding myself better. But, you know, I, I think sometimes I... I distract, 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 and actually magic can happen in the moments of still. You know, magic can happen in the moments when, whilst we might think that nothing is happening, there might be something going on over there, or there might be something bubbling up that maybe just sitting with it, you either find it, you know, for, for example, I'm going wildly off track here, but you know, like over the last few days, I've had some, you know, it's been, I've had a really tough couple of days, but, I'm starting to see that out of the back of that an acceptance is coming and I'm only seeing that by not doing anything about it, mm -hmm. you know, and I suppose what I'm trying to say is there is, there is, there is definitely something to be said about moving forward, but that, but sometimes that moving forward is actually just being conscious that you're being still. 100%. Do you know what I mean? No, no, you know, no, I, I completely agree. And there's also the thing that we're all different people, right? Yeah. And so, and I'm similar to you. My comfort zone, my default setting is like, I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to yeah, take yeah, action. Yeah, I'm going to yeah. wrap up that universe and I'm going to get it into that yeah, shape that yeah, I like yeah. it to be in, right? Yeah. <laughs> Whether it's a cylinder or a square <laughs> or whatever, universe is going to do my thing, right? Yeah. I'm totally with you. Yeah. And so, of course, for you and I, it's all about like, oh, wow, how can we surrender? And, and yeah. for me, that's such a major word at Acceptance. the moment. Acceptance. Accepting 
embracing and, and like you said that you know like i i like to i really love that thing of thinking about life like an ocean mm. and it's that thing that there's so much like you said there's so many movements going on below the surface that we have no idea about yeah. that and all of that everything that we send out you know whether we send it out with thoughts or with intentions or with physical actions it already has rippling effects we've, yeah. we've just haven't met that wave yet yeah, you know yeah, yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. and and starting to be in that space where we're like Okay, this this makes me feel anxious because it's not my default setting. Yeah. But it's okay. I will be with yeah. this anxiety and I will do the practices that I know kind of support me in that space, whether that is okay, I'm gonna be at home with a nice candle and my dog or gonna have a hot bath no or <laughs> I'm just gonna journal the shit out of this feeling. Yeah. You like you know, I do a lot of creative journaling where you're just me like, too. Okay, I'm in the pe- me I'm too. in the feeling and I'm will never read this again and maybe I'm gonna burn it but and maybe I'm even going to stretch and make circles, but I'm going to get this energy through me and I'm going to be with that. And and just allow, like you said, that so much magic takes place in the mm. silence. Mm. I agree. I created this little thing um, called uh, Silence is not lack of words, it's sacred space. Mm. And it really is that thing, right? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and so for you and I, yeah, the, those, that's definitely a massive, wonderful um step and chapter of our life to be in and and you know it's really wonderful to hear you resonating so well with it as well yeah. i would like to take you back a little bit um just because as these sessions these little interviews are really all about sort of like relating to to a lot of people out there that have dreams and hopes and it doesn't even have to be work related it can very much be just like how do i want to feel in daily life right yeah. you know where do i want to live who do yeah. i want to date who do i not want to date like all those kind of everyday life things so what what the hell is my purpose of being on this planet right yeah and and i would like to take you back just in that place again that we started out from because yeah just because almost I think it's a really vital thing, right? None of us wants to be in discomfort. We don't want to do it. So we normally mm. go into our default setting. For me and you, it's doing, right? Mm. And for other people, it's like, I'm going to procrastinate the shit out of this and just yeah. never do anything, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but like, just going back to that, because I think it's so vital to go to most huge transformation, most magical moments, most sacred ideas comes when we are in a place of not feeling great. Right? Yeah, it doesn't yeah, mean yeah, that we yeah, should yeah. consciously be seeking, like, let's not feel great. Yeah. But just for others to go, oh, but, you know, like, <laughs> just so that people really hear that I've been through lots of crazy stuff. You've been through lots of crazy yeah. stuff. We all have. But somehow that crazy stuff has inspired and propelled us to take an action mm-hmm. or to allow the action to come to us either way yeah. we want to look at it, right? So if I'm just going to take it back into that a little bit more, not to wallow in it, no, no, no. But, but just to ask again... So you said you'd been in, in advertising for 20 years at that point and for a long time of that, it really was a beautiful, magical space to be in. And all of a sudden, because we are evolving as people, and this is another important factor, right? Mm. Like that we are constantly evolving. Our soul is always attracting towards the next expansion, which doesn't mean it's a better thing. It's just a more refined version of who you are coming through. Yeah, right? yeah. So in that space, when you started to be more and more like, Meh, this is not yeah. me anymore, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and then would you mind sharing a little bit about what might took might have taken place before you got signed off with stress? Yeah. And how did it happen? Yeah, so I think it was I a number well, a number of things had happened. I basically I was uh, working working and living very badly. I call it a credit debit lifestyle. Um, I basically half the time was, I mean, actually it wasn't credit debit. There wasn't much credit going in at all. It was all debit. Even even the stuff that was meant to be in credit, i.e. going to the gym, was still stuff that I did to hurt myself, like another stressor. Um, so I basically, you know, if it, it, if it wasn't uh, going to the gym, you know, really hard intensive gym stuff, yeah, yeah. You know, eating okay. I've always kind of been okay yeah. on my eating. Yeah. Um, you know, then working really long hours, mm-hmm. and then come Thursday onwards, if not earlier, mm-hmm. drinking a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, I worked in advertising. You know, this stuff was really justified and enabled. Yeah. You know, and I think actually looking back, I look back now, and I've always had challenges around not challenges around drinking. I was a, I was very. Um, I, 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 I could work very well and, and also drink very well alongside mm. it, you know, and, and I think I can see now looking back, 
in particular when I was working in advertising, you know, it was it was a, it was one of the things I used as a distraction from this this void that I felt inside. You know, if it wasn't drinking, if it wasn't relationships, it was working, whatever those things might be. You know, I think at the heart of it, and again, I'm only still really seeing it now. I was a very unhappy girl. Do you know what I mean? I was a really unhappy girl underneath it all, um, and you know, and so I think where where I basically that's whilst I was living in that way I felt a lot of purpose though with the work that I was doing working in advertising I loved working in advertising I loved the job I loved the people you know I loved the social I loved all of it but the problem was is I then didn't start like I didn't like it so much it didn't fit with my purpose quite so much so all of those ways of living then without the purpose underneath which was very energizing it, it started working against each other and actually, I just didn't have that energy and I did feel more burnt out because that thing that was giving me the kind of gumption and galvanised me to keep going just wasn't there any longer. So actually, those detrimental things were really taking a hit. Then on top of that, um, my mum had cancer, got cancer, which fortunately at that time she did make a full recovery from. But it was just too much. I just didn't have the, I didn't have the, the, the money in the bank. I didn't, I didn't have the energy in the bank. Do you know what I mean? To then, yeah. to then be able to come back from it. And it was just... I just got to the point where I was like, I can't do this. I just can't do this. And I ended up being off for some time, but like I've, I said. No, I've, I've, no, thank you so much for sharing so honestly. Yeah, and I'm so fine. sorry, it was such a intense time. And, yeah, it was. And I'm honestly like, really, really thank you so much for sharing that from your heart, because I think this is always the point that quite often lacks when we read into you. So we watch people that are really successful, and this woman is highly successful. <laughs> um, that, that we kind of get this illusion that it's easy for everyone else. Yeah. So do you really have that kind of raw emotion? Like, no, this was not yeah. easy. And it's still an ongoing thing. And cool. but, you know, but I am, you know, I am all up for deciding to befriend myself right yeah. like just it's, it's definitely something i can relate to yeah and i also think a little bit of like that fuel that you used to have like you're talking about the fuel right and, and although part of it was fueled by excitement i'm sure that was also if it was might also have been fueled by a I don't know if this resonates with you, but have, you know that the, the statement of like, I'll show you. Yeah, of course. Oh my God, me and my lovely cool. friend the other day, we had this big talk about the, what happens yeah. when you no longer have that like, I'll show you attitude because yeah. the anger yeah. or the, the person you wanted to have this like, hmm, about, yeah. it's because time heals everything, right? Yeah. Like, there comes a point where you're like, I'm no longer that pissed off with my dad. Yeah. And, and being pissed off with my, my dad has basically been the big kick up my butt yeah, yeah. to do all this stuff, right? And then my dad isn't there anymore. Yeah. It's like, oh, but then, then what? Right? But that's it, yes. isn't it? Because that's, you know, like, I, you know, I look back now and I realise that, he, 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 I mean, even now a lot of my ambition is driven by fear, right? Mm. And actually, you know, if one gets rid of that fear, you know, I think that's been a huge thing for me. It's like, well, if I get rid of that fear, I can calm that within myself. Do I suddenly become less ambitious? Mm. Or do I go, you know, in my own words, do I become lazy? Mm. You know, because I don't have that thing that's driving me quite so much. But I think, um, you know, that, that's, a, that's a really interesting area for me, you know, to really dig into now and really come to, you know, come to un a, a particular uh, recently, understanding that a lot of what has fueled this behavior and certainly one of the defects that i think i i, I have carried is a real kind of lack of self-love you know and that's been what's propelled me forward in many instances so if one does start healing that void and taking care of yourself my immediate fear is oh fuck me am i not going to move so fast yeah. you know but actually I believe I will because it will be a different because it will be going towards what what I think is really important rather than moving away from what terrifies me. One hundred percent. Instead of running from something, you're going to be moving towards yeah. something, right? And running yeah. instead of running away, you're going to be yeah. moving towards something, and it's going to be fueled by the sense of love yeah. for yourself, of humanity. Yeah. That, that, that I'm always talking about that, that your heart is just oozing so greatly for everyone else, and it's so beautiful to hear that you're really like, hmm, yeah, I'm gonna just really immerse myself in this journey and, and, and which I know you really are fully and wholly doing, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, really, really, really beautiful, Kate. Um, I want to ask you, because obviously, you know, lots of people are gonna be out there going like, oh, well, that's all amazing. And I, yes, mm -hmm. I resonate with Kate. And yes, that's me too. 
and and I know there's never just one piece of advice, but do you want to share some kind of like I, I'm a very practical person, mm -hmm. really practically. Yeah. How how do you at the moment? How do you? What tools do you use to look after yourself? And you can share one, two, five hundred. I don't care. But just <laughs> practically for you. Yeah. What What are those things? Mm. So I think the the biggest thing for me at the moment is around acceptance. Yeah. So I think that, you know, the greatest stressor that we have in our life, the greatest conflict we have in our life is the difference between uh, where we are, who we are, how life is versus how we want it to be or how we think it should be. And, you know, that that imposter in our, that, you know, that imposter syndrome, that inner critic, whatever we call it, in our head is often referring to how we think should be in order to try and keep us safe. So I'm, I'm practicing a lot of acceptance at the moment about where I am, right? Versus where I think I should be. And to, to calm that voice, because it's not gonna go away if I keep fighting it, it's just to say it's okay. Like, I'm okay with who I am, I'm okay with where I am. Yes, you know, yes, yes. And actually, I think that there's something in, I do believe, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm personally on this journey at the moment, I do believe that if I have less mental energy focused on the fight of trying to pacify that voice with actually just accepting it, that I think that I'll be able to put that energy into what I can become. Yeah. Right, so rather than putting it over here, I'm literally investing it in the right thing. And I think then, I think that for me, you know, you were saying about out of, out of challenge comes growth. I think that if I can overcome that, and I'm and I mean overcome in the sense of just being okay, embracing with it, right, right, yeah, embracing rather, it, rather not than pushing it away, it. not being like that part of Kate has to go over there, and, and yeah. we're gonna lock her up in a yeah. in that wardrobe, right? Yeah, I exactly. think if I, I think if I can overcome it by accepting yeah. it, yeah. I think that that my greatest growth is yet to come. That's incredible. Yeah, so that's so that's what I would impart acceptance. Um, and knowing that you're okay, but that's, you know, I know that that's hard. You know, I suppose my point is, is that I've tried to control everything in my life and kind of look where it got me. Um, it got me some good, it's got me lots of challenge as well. And actually sometimes just thinking, do you know what? There's probably something bigger than me out there. There bloody must be because, you know, the trees grow, the, the plants grow, the sky's yeah. up there, do you know what I mean? There's something bigger than me. And, uh, and, yes. uh, and, and if, I'm just gonna leave it to that for a while. Right, and and, and and this is great, this is my next question. I was gonna say, what do you believe in something? What do you yeah. believe in? And you don't have to call it anything, you can again share as much as a little. Yeah. But um, but I, that's definitely, sorry, I just wanna say, this. that's definitely something, I mean, you know this about me anyway, but that is the one thing that looking back has always kept my energy up. Yeah. It's that thing that I have ultimate faith and, and this yeah. is not like you know if, if that if you don't resonate with that does not mean you are a bad person or you just need to be become like a devoted whatever and then yeah. life is going to sort itself out but when you have that faith and even if you don't but but just looking at it from a rational perspective like you're saying the earth has continued to spin at yeah. a certain way a certain rhythm in a distance from the sun for however many million billions years right yeah. why do we have this idea that we know better <laughs> that we know better yeah. that if only kate sits over there and if only she doesn't feel this and she doesn't you know then then everything is going to be okay and it's like i keep reminding myself of that and then i keep reminding myself like the first nine months of my existence even before i came into this physical body something someone else fought it we're gonna make a Josie, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was taken care of. Yeah. The one thing we need, the breath, it's taken care of. If I'm having a shitty day, a good day, if I'm feeling good thoughts about myself, bad thoughts about myself, the breath is there. Yeah. Like the ultimate thing that we need is they're kind of there. Yeah. I agree. So exactly. So then it's like, okay, so then even though that's not what society taught us, it's not what our parents in school, whatever else taught us, but could we perhaps at least stay open to the idea that Maybe there is something else, like yeah. this other energy that kind of is guiding us and that actually does love us and does. Yeah, and, and it's really and it, it's and it, and it's quite relaxing, isn't it? You know, because that's for someone who's been terrified of not being in control. You know, and actually, a lot of the challenging thinking I've had has been about either trying to be in control or making trying to make things go my way, mm -hmm. and and then feeling terribly let down when it hasn't 
So I think there's something very calming in just saying, okay, I'm powerless, right? You know, you take, you take, you take, you take control. Yeah. Um, and I don't know what that is. I don't know. I, and it doesn't matter. Do you know? It doesn't matter what. It doesn't matter what my version of it is. What someone else's version of it is. I just think I have to somehow. It makes me feel safe, and that's not that. That is so beautiful. <laughs> It makes you feel safe and that is enough. 100, 100, 100 percent. Final thing, let's round this up because I could speak to you all day and I knew you. Uh, <laughs> um, this whole thing, and I think this is major, it's so major, understanding that the one and most important relationship we will ever have, this is the one with ourselves, right? Mm. And and I had this experience like years ago, and it was really like a big aha moment where I realized that you know, there was going to be this thing and, you know, my mind was really worried about it. I wanted it to be a certain way again. I was like, ah, if only they go over there and only he says that mm -hmm. and then I will be okay. Like that essentially that thing of then I will be safe. Then I'm not yeah. going to die. Yeah, right? yeah, like that yeah. ultimate truth. Um, and then, then it was this thing where I was like, okay, Josie, so what's the ultimate, like what's the ultimate worst that can happen? You're actually not going to die in that situation yeah. just because that yeah. guy doesn't call you or this thing doesn't happen or, you know, someone, one client doesn't, you know, applaud you for your magic or whatever yeah. like you're not gonna die so what is it that you're actually afraid of right and it was really clear to me i was not afraid of you know my my loved ones or family or colleagues etc or society going like oh Josie Dave is really bad like i actually can really do i don't give that much a shit of that yeah yeah i was really scared of how i would respond to me i was scared of myself yeah i was freaked out scared about how I would start to treat myself, the thoughts I would be having yeah. if this, if this, yeah. if I didn't yeah. pull this thing yeah. off, right? So I realized it, I was literally my own worst enemy, which I'm sure lots of other people might have realized a lot earlier in their life, but I realized it and I was like, oh wow. So if the person I'm, you know, the person I need permission from, the person I'm really scared of, the person that yourself. I'm really freaked yeah. out of is myself because I, I can't run away from myself. If someone tells me something that doesn't feel good or sound nice, I can walk away. Yeah. If if that person is me, yeah, 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 then where yeah, do yeah, I run yeah, to? Yeah, right? Yeah. And like you said, I try to shut her off. I try to be like, well, the Josie that's scared, the Josie that's angry, I'm just gonna push her down, right? Yeah. Over there. And then I'm just gonna hope that she never comes back. And if I control everything in my life and if I do really well at everything in my life, yeah. then I'll be okay, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Only to realise that I cannot run away from myself. Of course. And so ultimately just like you're talking about i had to make friends with her i yeah. had to invite her in yeah. i had to invite in the really crazy scared girl right the yeah. one that was that just wanted to be loved yeah and that didn't have a clue about how to make that happen and that if someone did say that they love her how could i make sure that they continue to love me yeah right so i had to let her in and then the girl that was angry crazy upset that someone who had said they were going to look after her did not had not done a good enough job right I had to help, I had to welcome her in as well. And then once I started to sort of decide that those two girls are part of me as well, that I'm in fact kind of probably 10 different girls, right? Yeah. 10 different parts of my psyche. Once I started to do that, yeah, everything started to change because I was no longer so scared about yeah, what yeah, life yeah, was going to yeah, do yeah. because whatever happens out here, I'm okay with all of them. Yeah, I'm okay with being yeah, angry. Yeah, I'm okay yeah. with being sad. Yeah. I'm okay with being scared. I mean, all work in progress, right? But I've acknowledged that it is not the world I'm scared of. It was me. Yeah. And the more I can make friends with this, this yeah. one, all of me. Yeah. The more, you know, everything starts to soften. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I get it. I get it. We're all safe and it's all good. Yeah, I get it. I get it. I think I was always a little bit scared of losing it. My whole thing, my biggest belief was always around losing everything. But, um, mm -hmm. Because at one point I did, you know, my fa my father died when I was a baby, so you know that that was always, you know, I want, you know, you can't rationalise that with a pre-verbal pre-verbal no. child, right? No. Um. So at one point I did, but you know, I think what I have now is an, an understanding of that, an awareness of that, an ability to, I'm learning to look after that little girl, um. But also what I have is a lot of evidence that yeah. I don't lose everything, and I can always get myself through stuff. Exactly, and, and that's something that I practice a lot. I actually, I, I write stuff down, so especially yeah. the things I'm scared about. I write about how I'm feeling before the event happens, and I write about it afterwards. Yeah. And you create that evidence, yeah. basically, yeah. like, well, I didn't yeah. die. Yeah. And, and, you know, and I was actually really kind to myself, and, and what I've started doing is, if something happens in life where I feel like normally I would, I would do really 
self-destructive behavior, really yeah. try and punish myself or forget thing, I do the opposite. And it feels really weird, but I do it. I'm like, brilliant opportunity, mm-hmm. yay! Josie's gonna give you a reward. And like, part of me is like, what the fuck, you're gonna give me a reward with this? And I'm like, yeah, I am, <laughs> right? So it's a dead thing of like, no matter what I do, I don't do. Yeah. No matter what people tell me or don't tell me, I look after me. Yeah. I'm proud of me, yeah. I love myself, all that kind of stuff, so yeah. Thank you so much, Kate. So it's been uh, it's it's been magic. I wish you had more time. But thank you so much. Thank you. Lovely, Kate. Um, just tell the lovely people here. Um, so push. What's the website? Pushmindandbody.com. Um, yeah, it's going through quite a revamp at the moment. So we're all about making work better. Um, so you'll see that and how we're going to do that through our work with corporates, our um, work with charities and not-for-profit, which is Push Community, and then finally Push Futures, which is the work we do with schools and colleges. Which is so exciting. And I'm just finishing that off. Just to, So in really practical term, guys, if you are uh, working in the corporate world, which I know a lot of you are, and you're thinking it would be so nice to have a nice workshop or a nice talk or a nice event, um, get in touch with Push. They have all these amazing coaches. They have amazing teachers. I'm obviously one of them. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, that's it. And also, you are also on LinkedIn, right, Kate? Yes. And I know you write beautiful posts, oh, really thanks. inspirational posts. So is that your, just your full name, Kate? Just Kate Mur- Kate C. Murden. Perfect. Thank you so Thank much. You. It's been so cool. Thanks, Thanks, darling. Thank you. 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 Thank you.